This is the Chris Abraham Show. Hey, this is the Chris Abraham Show, Season uh, 5, Episode 47. And I'm here at uh, Penrose Square Park. And uh, running late to get back to work today on Sunday. I took the 30 pounds out of my uh, Go Ruck fag. So I'm running without any extra weight at all, and it feels amazing. Um, yesterday was awesome. I got up really early made breakfast, made coffee, rode my bike to Roosevelt Island, which is about five miles away, participated as a tail runner, as a volunteer, and walked the trail, which is exactly 5K, and um, then rode my bike up to the plaza up in Roslyn and spent time getting to know my fellow park run volunteers and runners and uh darn it here comes the wind i guess i will run this through adobe it'll make it perfect but the wind feels good but it's not good for the for the podcast but all mistakes are fixed using adobe um i wonder what it's going to do to the background noise of the uh the fountain but as long as it kills the uh, the wind noise, I'm cool with it. Uh, there's a guy in this neighborhood who has an i8 BMW, like a hybrid or an electric supercar. And all he does is like drives around the neighborhood. It's so... He's like a, kind of a Russian gangster looking guy. So like, it's just like, you know, like, you know how thugs... You know how thugs just go ahead and, like, like cruise the neighborhood? They never go anywhere. They just cruise their turf. It feels like that. Um, I see him all over, just this part of South Arlington. I really don't know what he does or where he goes, but he's ubiquitous, sort of like I am on foot. Uh, so it was great. Um, I ordered a pair of... Uh, of last model Nike Pegasus Trail 4s because the uh, the terrain of the uh, Roosevelt Island is pretty rugged so I just thought I'd better uh, do that to see how that feels and I'm going to volunteer as tail walker for I don't know August September maybe really get a feel for it every Saturday Maybe go down there during the week and try to do runs there uh, just on my own, kind of to noodle around, get a feel for the terrain. Uh, as you know, I have no desire to be a competitive runner. I just have a desire to run. But for whatever reason, I'm extremely careful, extremely worried, extremely nervous, extremely resistant, extremely reluctant. Um... I met another Hawaiian person or person from Hawaii. Uh, I think her name's Kim. Anyway, she went to the same elementary school I went to. It was uh, 20 years difference, but uh, she was an Aliamanu elementary falcon, just like I was. Uh, she went there through elementary school, a little bit of early high school, so... Meeting all the, all the like Hawaiian kind, local kind, Larat people was really, it's really cool. Um, and I don't know, I'm going to try to get as many hours done. It's E E E E o'clock. It's 11, 11 in the morning. And I bullshitted this morning. I had a big breakfast, but I, and a pot of coffee, but, uh, I didn't really do anything. Um, when I got home, so I rode my I, so after I finished with the coffee, 
I jumped on the Metro because I was too much of a wimp to bike from Roslyn to courthouse. So I took the Metro one stop and got up and I had an everything bagel and whitefish salad at that bagel joint in courthouse. And then I rode my bike to uh, what used to be like what, the place that I bought my Surly from. Now it's a Trek store on Wilson. Then I ran into like the crazy guy from the neighborhood who wears the fedora. And we talked for a while. Mike? Mike? I don't know. Um, and then I rode across town and ended up spending the rest of the afternoon at Idido's and got to talk with Claudia, who was awesome. And I got to talk to uh, Symphonia, Symphonius. And I got to have some coffee and some water and all that other fun stuff. I feel like today I started off wrong because I didn't hydrate. I feel like when I feel like the coffee buzz, it's because I just haven't had enough hydration and too much coffee. So from here, I'm going to go to the library and I'm going to drink uh, extensive amounts of water with hydration salts and get as much work done between now and five. And then from five, I'm going to come to Starbucks and I'm going to try to behave today. So this morning I just had bacon and eggs and I'm going to try to make that my only meal until tomorrow. Um, I feel like my body needs some serious uh, fasting. I really enjoyed it. Oh, and then I got home and uh, I had some ice cream, man. I had some ice cream and some peanuts. Like today was, yesterday was a complete blast uh, and a bust. And then I spent three, me I, 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 I rode for 3,000 meters on the rowing machine. I wanted to do 10, but I just wasn't into it after such a busy day. I will try to do the rest tonight. Uh, wow, it's really windy. Sorry, guys. I'm sure that you won't hear the wind at all after I run it through the Adobe sound fixer. But if that uh, Adobe AI audio tool didn't exist, this uh, would be a really harsh uh, episode. So thank you, Adobe. Thank you, AI overlords. Mahalo. Um, like I said, my go rut is completely light today. No, no, uh, uh, weight in it at all. I need to remind myself to cancel the cleaning team because I kind of want to get a lot of hours, uh, done tomorrow. Uh, they... feel a little anxiety today. I don't know if it's like the lack of hydration or if it's just like, an existential crisis or because it feels like today I just feel, um, anchorless or not anchorless. I feel like I don't have a, I don't currently have a Northern light, even though I'm building community. I'm returning to my brothers at the lodge. I'm returning to my, uh, brothers, uh, and sisters at, um, the new ones at park run. I'm getting enough hours. I'm having happy clients. I just don't know when I'm going to be when I grow up. And at 53, I'm starting to feel a little bit of pressure to find out. So, I don't know. I don't know what this week looks like. I um, I think I might try to bike every day and actually just wear a courier bag all this week and not carry any weight, but get as much bicycling in. I feel like uh, it was so much fun to bicycle yesterday that I kind of want to make it an everyday thing. And maybe I can bike all the way to Eastern Market or I can go to Central Library. Uh, maybe I'll do Central Library tomorrow, Arlington Central Library. And I'll make myself a courier bag guy instead of a backpack guy. And to be honest, the uh, the bicycling uh, brings my heart rate up to, you know, the one twenties and one thirties, as opposed to walking, which doesn't do much more than, you know, one Oh eight, one ten, 
uh, beats per second, which might be really good for my zone training. So I'm not going to put extra weight on the bike. I'm not going to combine uh, backpack plating with bicycles because I don't want... One of the reasons why I didn't ride my bike a lot when I was 350 is because I just didn't want that kind of excessive weight on my bike. And I want to give my bike as li as little stress as I possibly can. And so that's what I'll do. Anyway, I was also mentioning a couple things about how, uh, on, uh, on social media today. I mentioned how... Um, the prime ages of, uh, of 12 to 24 being the prime ages of gang activity in North America coincide perfectly with exactly what they call adolescent gun crimes and gun deaths and homicide deaths, which is exactly uh, 12 to 24. And now they consider uh, adolescent death to be upwards of 21, 26. So if they keep on moving, you know, if they've, I didn't know when they said that uh, children can stay on the children, not the children, but the, the offspring of parents can stay on their parents' health insurance until they're 26. I didn't know that that was going to be a loop around towards the infantilization of Americans to kind of include everybody under 26 in the world of child gun death. Because we all know um, that um, men tend to calm down after 40. So inevitably, all the gangland shootings. And besides, gangs are smart. They make sure that anybody who is a juvenile does all the murdering because if they... Uh, murder while they're a juvenile. First of all, it protects the elder gang member from going, you know, to jail. But generally speaking, those kids end up going to juvie and then having their records expunged. So a lot of, uh, in the same way that terrorists hide behind um, old age homes and hospitals and schools, um, gang members hide behind juveniles uh, because they want, first of all, they don't want to go to jail. And secondly, nobody throws the books at, at the youth. Um, so, of course, uh, kids between 12 and 24 are going to be the highest incidence of gun uh, homicides in America because those are the kids uh, shooting each other in cities over turf over drugs over uh pride over hubris over being uh dissed over uh being disrespected over you know by the time you are over 26 you're like a little bit calmer and all the hormones aren't affecting you if 26 is the first time that you have enough uh a frontal lobe, a mature enough frontal lobe to be able to make decisions, then people wouldn't call 16 to 26 um, uh, military age. Those are the most virile, the strongest, the fittest, the most aggressive, and the least likely to be afraid of the entire world. Um, nobody outside, nobody wants a uh, a soldier, a new soldier outside of 26. I mean, you'll take a soldier into 50, but mostly the best cannon fodder is from 17 to 26. If people aren't, uh, aren't responsible for their actions until 27, it means you shouldn't be able to drink, you shouldn't be able to vote, you shouldn't be able to transition you shouldn't be able to get tattoos. You shouldn't be able to get plastic surgery. You should maybe be able to do these things, maybe with the parents, okay? Um, but, you know, the responsibility should be, uh, you should only go to juvie until you're 27. Like, there's just uh, the idea of not uh, being an adult until you're 26 or 27 
is a red herring to be able to argue whatever you want that people under 26 should not. It's exclusively firearms. It's exclusively whether you should own firearms. I heard that one state moved the, even the rifle ownership up to 21. I'm pretty sure that the Supreme Court and federal courts are going to knock that down. And I'm sure at some point it's going to be knocked down to 18. At some point, uh, at some point, um, the federal court is going to decide that even pistols uh, should be uh, brought down to 18 years old purchase and that uh, long rifles should be brought down to 16 year old uh, for purchase. But who knows? I feel like the uh, left and right are entirely different um, dimensions. I feel like while um, the left feels like it's winning an entire war, the right feels like it's winning an entirely different war. The war that the right feels it's winning is the fact that 26 or 27 states have constitutional carry and uh, more and more states are offering permitted concealed carry, CCW, including uh, Maryland and D.C., who you would think would never allow that. I'm, in fact, possibly just selling all of my firearms and just getting a Glock 26, which, you know, um, according to Maryland and D.C. law, you, uh, if you are a concealed carry holder, you are only allowed to have a maximum 10 round magazine and a maximum of 10 rounds in a pistol. So for example, if you have, if you carry a Glock 26, you can't have 10 plus one in your firearm. You need to have a loaded 10 round magazine and then, uh, insert the magazine cycle one round and then have nine in the, in the magazine, one in the chamber. If I got a Glock 27, I would have a nine round magazine, which means that I would have nine plus one, but then I wouldn't be able to have backup magazines with 10 unless I added a Pearson extension, which might be a good solution. I don't know. I like the idea of having a Glock 26, which is compatible with Glock 19s and Glock 17s, but I'm not sure. I don't even have my concealed carry right now. So this is all just like for amusement purposes in my thinking head. So anyway, I'll talk to you guys soon. I got to get to work and in 20 minutes or half an hour, uh, the live no agenda show will be coming on and I want to listen to that. Love you guys. Take care. And I'll talk to you soon. Um, also remember that over half of all gun-related deaths are the direct result of gun suicide? Do you think suicide is a right? Do you think suicide is a personal right? Do you think taking your own life should be lumped in with taking another life? Um, it seems like we live... Amongst Catholics, I think that's true. But amongst people who believe that you have complete agency over your existence... Um, is it encouraged to take your own life with a gun? Is that completely a non sequitur? Or uh, should we include, or are gun suicides used to um, falsely inflate the uh, death by gun numbers in order to be more competitive with um, numbers such as teens in car wrecks or people in car deaths or general car deaths or other kinds of deaths or um, drowning or all these other things. I feel like um, the anti-gun lobby really wants uh, gun deaths to be the number one uh, reason for adolescents to die. And adolescence now goes all the way up to 26. So that is an adolescent. So when you, you know, when you're married and have like your fifth kid and you're 25, don't forget, you're an adolescent. If you have your kid at 16 and they're 10 years old, you can actually be adolescents at the same time if you have a 
12 or 13 year old child. You can be, you know, um, you, you and your child can be adolescents at the same time, enjoying the same um, uh, immature frontal lobe together. It could be multi-generational. Uh, multi. In fact, I think the only way you can get a hot girl to want to marry you is if you uh, trick her before she's 26. So my real only shots was when, uh, were when I was in my 20s. And now there's no way a girl's going to be dumb enough to marry me or even date me. I wouldn't date me. Lots of love, guys. I'll talk to you soon. Have a great week and mahalo. Get some hydration in you and go uh, this next Saturday, go on a park run. It's free. It's inviting. It's encouraging. And you can't go too slowly. And to define that, there's no such thing as going slow enough that anybody's frustrated with you. I was a tail walker and my time was one hour and 11 minutes for a 5K. So let that be a lesson to you. Love you and talk to you soon. This was... Season 5, Episode 47 of The Chris Abraham Show. Thank you for listening to The Chris Abraham Show. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Until next time.